What's happening on this mission that makes it um, unique? Ah, that, that's a great question because that's the beauty about the Mars program is that it's a series of missions. And as we learn from one mission, we take what we learned and apply it to the next mission. So basically we've had a, ser you know, a, a very successful series of missions that have r really gotten us a lot of data on the surface of Mars. So they kind of looked at the geology, the ground, the rocks, um, and what they found is that um, there's evidence that there used to be liquid water present on the surface. They see these uh, dry riverbeds. They see the outlines of what looks like dried up oceans. Um, but water can't exist on the surface today. It's, the atmosphere is too thin and too dry and too cold. So that raises the science question, what happened to the atmosphere? And that's where MAVEN comes in, and that's what makes us kind of unique. Instead of looking at the surface of the planet, we're taking a look at the atmosphere of the planet. And our goal is to basically uh, study how the atmosphere changes, look at the physics of what's going on with the atmosphere, how the wind from the sun, the solar wind, interacts with the atmosphere and causes it to be lost into space. And the reason that's important is they can take that information and make computer models. And then they can use those computer models to basically go back in time and see when in the history of Mars the conditions would have been right to have oceans and lakes and rivers on the surface. And so that, you know, those conditions would have been, you know, made for a very different world than what we're seeing today. Solar rays on top, and then when uh, we do, don't see the sun, we go behind the planet. Um, we actually have batteries right on the bottom here, um, and so those lithium ion batteries will store energy and then uh, power the spacecraft while you know we're out of view of the sun, and then we come back up. Um, for radio, you know, we take all the data and send it back down to Earth. So this is the high gain antenna on top. Um, so we send back in X band uh, all the science data and then beam it up. Uh, commands to basically tell the spacecraft this is what we want you to do. And we'll typically put up weeks worth of commands to say here's kind of the sequence of events we want the, the spacecraft to conduct the science operations. Uh, the spacecraft will conduct it, gather the science data, and then again send, send the data back down. So this is the antenna that we use to talk to the Deep Space Network, um, the DSN uh, stations at, in Spain, California, uh, and Australia. How long does it take for signals to go back and forth? It can really, uh, you know, it depends on where Mars, Earth and Mars are in the orbit, but it can take up to, you know, 10, 15 minutes for a signal to get from the Earth to our spacecraft at Mars and then another 10, 15 minutes to get back down. Um, so in taking a look, we've got two sets of science instruments or, or science instruments that, that kind of do two different things. We have a, a set of science instruments that want to look at the sun and the effects of the solar wind. So we call those our uh, particle and field uh, instruments. And uh, those are kind of managed by the University of California at Berkeley. Um, and so a lot of those are, you know, they, they want to be either staring at the sun or staring at a, at a fixed offset from the sun. And so the majority of our orbit is actually spent with the solar rays and the particle and fields, everything kind of staring at the sun, right? Now, but there's another set of science instruments that want to look at the atmosphere. So we're going around in an elliptical orbit, and so where the atmosphere is is, is kind of constantly changing as we move around uh, that orbit. Um, so what we've done is we've uh, basically put a platform on with a set of gimbals, a set of motors that we can actually articulate. So we have a platform here that we can actually move and actually keep our, our instruments on this platform pointed at the atmosphere as the spacecraft goes around the sun. And then for the rest of the design, you basically have these bays where we have all kinds of, uh, you know, all of our components that we need to kind of keep the spacecraft healthy, keep the science instruments uh, kind of supplied with power and with data. Uh, and CU's last was involved in that. And CU, yeah, in fact, CU has a remote sensing, uh, their, you know, their remote sensing package is actually on this platform. I believe it's actually this yellow uh, thing right here. There's two pieces to it. Um, I think one is the, I think, you know, people are, are fascinated by could ha life have evolved somewhere else other than Earth? Um, and from what we know today, uh, the, you know, one thing you need is liquid water. And so if we can show in these computer models that Mars once had liquid water and that it was warm enough then you've got all the conditions for, for, 
for, for, uh, for life potentially to have evolved. So that's something that a lot of people, a lot of scientists, and you know, a lot of engineers like me are very interested in, in finding out. Um, and then the other piece of it is, is by understanding the atmosphere of Mars, we can better understand climates, weather, um, by studying the atmosphere of Mars and how the physics of that atmosphere works, we can actually apply that to, to models here on for Earth's atmosphere. And so maybe that'll help us better understand Earth's climate.